Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Heather and today's video is all about newborn must-haves. This is my son Judah. He is now seven months old, um, but he'll just be hanging out in the background while I talk. So he might get a little talkative, so just excuse the noise. I know for me as a new mom, it was very overwhelming knowing what exactly I needed to have ready for my newborn when I brought him home. And there are just so many things out there that are marketed to new moms that you feel like you have to have or maybe you're not being a good mom if you don't have every one of these things. But that is just not the case. There are only a few things that you really need for your little one. So in today's video, I wanted to just share some of the top things that I actually used on a daily basis with my baby. So number one thing that you are going to need for your newborn is a car seat. You are going to want something that is safe and ready to go to bring your newborn home. It is not recommended to buy a used car seat because they're constantly improving the safety features. You don't know if it's been in a wreck. So it is one of the things that we opted to buy new, but I would recommend having that pretty early even before your baby arrives because you never know if you might go into early labor or something like that. So it's a good idea to go ahead and have a car seat ready to go and installed properly so that your little one can come home safely. Um, I don't have my car seat in here. It is in the living room right now and I just didn't want to bring it because it's kind of bulky, but I got an infant uh, car seat that you can take in and out of the car. I did get one for free by taking a safety class as well. Um, that is an option available for moms if you go to like your public health office. Then a lot of times they'll offer a class where you can attend and get a car seat for free. But in that class, the car seats they were offering were the bigger kind that could not come in and out of the car. And I knew that we were going to want one that we could keep him in and carry around. So I still have that one as well for him to grow into once he is a little bit bigger. Number two is a safe place for your baby to sleep. Um, so we, when he was born, we were in a tiny one bedroom apartment where we could not even fit a crib in our bedroom. So we opted for a pack and play because not only was it small enough to fit our space, but it was also something that we knew we could use for the long run. The great thing about the pack and play is how portable it is. You just fold it up and then you can take it with you, whether you're going to your in-laws um, or maybe you're traveling and you need a place for a baby to sleep in the hotel or camping. And it's a great thing to have that you can take along and your baby's already used to sleeping in it. So it makes that transition just a little easier. So even if you do have a crib, uh, you might even get a pack and play just to have for travel because it's really a great um, option for that. We didn't do a bassinet because they just grow out of them so quickly and we wanted something that was going to be the most cost effective as well. We ended up having a pretty big baby. He was eight pounds and 12 ounces when he was born. So I'm glad that we did not go for the bassinet with him. Number three is a safe place to put your baby down when you need to do other things. As cuddly as they are, and as much as you want to just hold your newborn, there are going to be those times when you just need uh, your hands free and you need to be able to do just the basic necessities like going to the bathroom and making yourself some lunch. So I highly recommend just a safe space for your newborn to lay down. Um, we were gifted a bouncer by a friend, so it was used, but it was in great condition, and that has worked out great. He would stay in the bouncer, fall asleep in it, and it was a great place to just know that he was okay, he was comfortable, he was safe, while I did some of those things that needed to get done. You could also opt for a swing uh, or something like that. We just did not have the space for a swing, so the bouncer was a good option for us. Personally, I don't think it matters that much what kind of bouncer you get as long as it's safe and your baby is comfortable in it, but they do range all across the board on price. 
So whatever just works best for your family and your baby. The next thing is clothes. So a newborn really does not need a ton of clothes. That is one thing I learned very quickly. They're so cute and tiny and you just want to dress them in all of these cute outfits. But in reality, they get messy sometimes and they're really not doing a whole lot at that age other than eating, sleeping, and pooping. So you don't need a lot of outfits unless you just want to have them. But for me, I just wanted something that my baby would be comfortable in. He was born at the very beginning of flu season in December. So we weren't taking him that many places anyway. And right after that, coronavirus happened. So we didn't end up needing a lot of outfits, but either way, even if your baby's born in the summer, just a few good basic onesies are a good way to go. So I got a few packs of these just plain white onesies. And then of course, people love to give clothes for, to babies. So you'll probably be gifted several things as well. But I would just recommend having some good, comfortable, basic um, cotton onesies in the newborn size as well as zero to three months. That way you already have them ready to go as your baby is growing and you're not having to worry about running out to the store to buy new onesies once you realize that he, ha he or she has outgrown the newborn. So just a good set of basic onesies in newborn and the next size up. Also, you're going to need something for your baby to sleep in. And honestly, most of the time, my baby stayed in these for the majority of the time, these little footed sleepers. And these were great because not only are they easy to get on and off, you don't have to put them over your baby's head. My baby hated and honestly still doesn't really love things going on his head or over his head. So these are great for that because they just zip and they're easy to change diapers. They keep their little feet warm at night. So I would definitely recommend having a couple of these to rotate out in case, you know, one of them gets dirty. Maybe have like three to five of these ready to go while the others are in the wash. And that's definitely a great thing that you'll need probably throughout, uh, but definitely for your newborn. Personally, I really, really don't like the kind that button up. It is just, a lot of trouble to me to, to button and unbutton every time I'm changing his diaper when I would be changing his diaper so many times a day. So the ones with the buttons I really didn't use, I really recommend one that has a zipper. Along the same uh, lines of sleep, our baby loved to be swaddled. I know not all babies like to be swaddled, uh, but for our baby, he could not sleep unless he was swaddled really nice and snug and we were fortunate that our hospital actually gave us a swaddle to take home and it was this halo swaddle here and the great thing about it is it does not require any swaddling skills whatsoever you just put your baby in it it has these little um holes for to get it the right way the little holes that their arms go through and then their feet and the bottom, you just zip that up, and then the sides have Velcro that you can wrap around with your baby's arms down so they are nice and snug and swaddled without any stress of wondering if you are swaddling them correctly or letting the swaddle blanket get loose at night or anything like that. So I would definitely recommend one of these just for an easy, a uh, hassle-free way to swaddle your baby if that's the route that you are going. It can't hurt to have some swaddle blankets as well. You might want to have that to take uh, to a doctor's appointment if, if your baby needs to be swaddled after vaccines or something like that. But definitely recommend at least one or two of these with a the zipper and the Velcro that you can rotate out. Next up is a diaper bag. So we opted for a backpack style. So it's just a very neutral um, gray backpack is what I chose because I wanted something that myself or my husband could carry and that would just match whatever I was wearing and then also be hands free since you know when you have a baby it's a lot easier than having like a tote style or something like that just to have something that will help your hands be free. 
And one of the thing that, things that was really important to me in looking for a diaper bag, aside from price, because I didn't, I wasn't trying to break the bank on it, um, but I really wanted one that came with a fold out changing pad like this. So this one came with this pad that you can pull out and take with you, uh, whether you're changing your baby in the bathroom or um, at the doctor's office or something like that where you want a clean surface for your baby uh, to put down when you're changing their diaper. So that's one of the things that was really important to me to look for. Another thing that I liked about this particular bag that was important to me was a place for bottles. So this one had these little cooling pockets uh, for bottles to go. It also has a pocket for wipes, which we really didn't end up using because they didn't really fit properly. But just something that has a few pockets that you can put a change of clothes, some wipes, extra diapers, and things like that. Um, you really don't need anything too crazy, just something that will be easy and that you can get to the things you need quickly. Because when you have a crying baby who needs a diaper change, you don't want to be digging through all kinds of pockets wondering where the diapers are. That has definitely happened to me, so I can speak from experience. Next up is bathing. So you're definitely going to want some way of bathing your baby when they're newborns. They are so tiny and you just need something that they can fit in safely. And so again, we were in a very small one bedroom apartment, so I did not want something big and bulky that was going to take up a lot of space. So we opted for this foldable uh, tulip. And so this actually fits right into the sink and your baby goes in the middle and it keeps them on a soft, safe surface while you're bathing them. Now that he is bigger, we put it in the bathtub and just sit him up just so he has something soft to sit on. Um, so we are actually even still using this. And when you're done, you can just throw it in the washing machine or hang it up to dry if you want to use it um, another time in between washes. So this was a really great space saver. When we're not using it, I can just fold it up and put it in the bathroom cabinet until the next bath. Honestly, at the newborn stage, he didn't need baths all that often, maybe once a week, because they really aren't getting that dirty and most of the time they can just be wiped down. But when they are ready for a bath, which is usually when their umbilical cord has fallen off, then your doctor will give you the okay to give them a bath. So it would be a good idea to just have something ready for that first bath. Along those same lines, you'll definitely want some kind of baby shampoo um, or body wash. I recommend something that's unscented because their skin can just be so sensitive at that age. Look for products that are uh, fragrance free, maybe for sensitive skin. And we used one that was just for hair and body, kept it simple um, with that. And then also you might want to get a lotion as well. I don't have the one that we use right here with me, but it is a fragrance free brand um, just to moisturize his skin after I give him a bath. He has especially sensitive skin, all that water and the soap can can dry their skin out so it's a good idea to just put some lotion on them after their bath so i would recommend having that on hand as well next up is a brush so i actually have two i don't have my other one with me but i had just a regular brush and then i got this little cradle cap brush because he did have just a little bit of dry skin on his scalp if your baby does end up having cradle cap, this is great um, to just kind of scrub gently on those areas to help get some of those flakes off. Um, I would just add a little bit of coconut oil to moisturize and then wash it out and brush his head with this and it really helps keep that cradle cap um, under control. So I would definitely recommend that as well for bath time. Next is obviously you're going to need diapers and wipes. We opted for just using regular diapers. I did a lot of research on cloth diapering and it just didn't seem like the best option for us. So we went ahead and just did the disposable diapers. I would highly recommend if you are using disposable diapers to go ahead and have a stockpile ready to go and even have 
a pack in the next size up. So when your baby does outgrow those newborn diapers, you already have the next size ready to go. That happened to us so quickly. You will just be amazed at how fast your baby grows out of things. And I was so thankful that we already had a box of diapers ready to put him in once he needed them. Next thing is burp cloths. You'll definitely want to have some burp cloths on hand. These can be very messy and spit up and it's nice to just have some of these tucked away. I would keep one next to the nightstand or on the nightstand, tucked away in the couch. Um, you'll definitely want to have some good burp cloths. I recommend these big, thick kind because if your baby is anything like mine, he spit up, still spits up a lot. And these are nice and absorbent. You can easily just throw it over your shoulder when you're ready to burp them. But I also recommend having these smaller size, like this one, this thin, uh, like little square kind, because these came in really handy just to like wipe off drool or spit up off his face and when I didn't really need the bigger thicker kind for that. So maybe have a few burp cloths in different sizes and have a few on hand ready to go so when you're washing some you'll have some more ready and clean. Next is diaper cream. You're definitely going to want some kind of diaper cream to prevent your baby from getting a rash you never know when that first rash is going to pop up so it's a good idea to just have some on hand i don't have a certain brand that i 100 percent recommend i've used this butt paste and i've used the desitin and between those two i personally prefer the desitin which is why i don't have it on hand because we ran out just because it's a little bit thicker but having some kind of diaper cream on hand is is a good idea um just in case that first rash pops up, you wanna be ready. Another thing that you'll want to have on hand is some type of first aid, um, personal care type kit. So I have this little bag that I keep everything in. Um, I want some kind of thermometer, just in case your baby gets a fever. It's nice to have a thermometer so you can check for that. And then we have this aspirator um, bulb this came in handy when we first brought him home and he was just having a lot of spit up and um, mucus just stuck in his mouth. This was good for just squeezing that out and making sure that he was safe. Also recommend having one of these and this is, you may have seen this before, it is the Nose Frida and when babies are first born, they have little tiny nasal passages and it's harder for them to breathe. It's easier for those passages to get stuck up, stuck, stopped up with, you know, snot and mucus and things like that. So this was really great to have just to clean out their little nose. It sounds really gross, I know. And before I became a mom, I would have said, no way am I doing that. But once you become a mom, there are a lot of gross things that you'll be doing, and this is probably the least of them to be honest but you just put this part in their nose and you put your mouth on this end and you just suck out the snot but don't worry there is a filter um, and no snot or mucus or anything will get in your mouth I promise but it is a good idea to use some saline drops first when you're using this just to help get everything uh, loosened up and easier to get out. Hey, I am back. My baby ended up waking up from his nap after only like 10 minutes, and then he spit up all over my shirt. So I had to change clothes, so here we are. Okay, so back to sleep essentials. So I talked about a swaddle, a safe place to sleep, Next up is some type of sound machine. This isn't necessarily a must have, but it is definitely something that will make your life better, your baby's life better, and just overall a happier experience. We actually bought our sound machine while I was still pregnant because towards the end of my pregnancy, I was having a lot of trouble with insomnia. And this machine just really helped 
create a more peaceful environment for me to sleep and once our baby came along he has really loved it too so the one that we use is the hatch saw machine i had read a lot of good reviews about it and someone was kind Ow. enough to actually purchase it for us it is a little bit pricey but i think it is well worth the price because it's something that you can use for a long time, not just in the newborn days. It's something you can use into the toddler years. So I think it's worth a higher price point for this particular item. It's really sleek um, and simple, which I like. I didn't want anything that was gonna be too loud or too bright and colorful and crazy. I just wanted something that blended in with the aesthetic. And this, I think, does a great job of that. You can turn it on just by pressing your finger on it and you can also program it to your phone so that you can use your phone to turn it on, to change the sound, to change the lighting. So that's really convenient if you want to have access to it when you're not even in the room. But yeah, you can just press it with a finger. It has several different light settings, several different sounds. My favorite is the rain. It's just so peaceful and relaxing. And my husband and I really like having that rain sound on even just for us to sleep but for when my baby's taking a nap then I'll usually put it on white noise or something like that to help right now you might even hear the siren but yeah just to help uh, cancel out some of that background noise and help him sleep a little bit better so I highly recommend some type of sound machine and I really like this um, hatch one another thing that is not necessarily a a necessity but it's something that really gave me peace of mind and that I have really enjoyed and that is a baby monitor um, it really depends on your setup if you feel like you need one when my baby was born we lived in a townhouse style home and so he was upstairs in our bedroom and I would be working from home downstairs so it was really nice to have this so I could check on him without having to go upstairs and risk waking him up. I could just look on the monitor and it has picture and sound. So that really helped with my peace of mind. And even now that we're in just a one story, I like having this even just to, I don't know, it just makes me feel better to be able to see him while he's napping. And even sometimes in the middle of the night, if I hear him, stirring but I don't want to get up and go look at him and wake him up I might even use it for those times to look on the monitor so I don't know maybe it has become a little bit of a crutch for me but it's something that I feel like is worth it for the peace of mind so. next up is some type of play area for your baby uh, some type of play mat that you can put them on to do their tummy time and a play gym that has some things for them to reach for that really stimulates their learning so I got a really simple one I really like a very minimal aesthetic and not a lot of loud and bright colorful things. So I opted for this neutral colored one. Um, now I have some other things that I've added to it with color, but it's really neutral. It folds up so you could fold it and put it against the wall when you're not using it or in a closet. It's super easy to move around. Um, and as you can see, you can attach other toys and things to it as your baby gets older and has different needs. As they get older, they do um, appreciate more color, and so I've added different things to it. You can add like a way, um, but it's just really pretty. It's neutral. It's easy to just prop up over your play mat and give something to entertain baby and just help them with their different motor skills as they're growing. So I really enjoyed this one. As far as his play mat, I actually just use a quilt that my aunt made. It's got a lot of black and white and newborns really like black and white contrast and then it has some colorful uh, shapes on it as well. So it's actually been perfect for a play mat and so we've just actually used that and still use that even today with this same play gym. Next up is some type of baby carrier that you can wear your baby in. This is really helpful for when you need your hands free and you need to be able to move around but you want your baby with you. And so the one that I used when he was a newborn is this wrap style. And this is the boba wrap. Um, so 
it is actually just one really long piece of fabric and you just wrap it around you and put your baby in it. It can be really good for if your baby is having trouble going to sleep, they're right next to you, they can feel your heartbeat. So my baby would pretty much always fall asleep in this thing. Um, since he was born during flu season, we weren't really going places all that often, but I would go for walks with him with this if I didn't want to take the stroller or when it was a little colder outside and I wanted him to be next to my body. This came in really handy for that. And I ended up using this until he was probably four months old and then he really started to get a little too heavy for it and it just didn't seem comfortable anymore. And so I ended up getting a more structured carrier at that point. But this was great because I think it had like a cute look to it, but you could get a neutral color like this and that way you and your husband or your partner could wear it as well. My husband is 6'3 and I am 5'2 so this worked out great for something that could fit both of us and you didn't have to readjust it every time you were using it between different people so it was really convenient for that and then it's really easy to just fold it up and store it away and also to just throw it in the wash. So I would definitely recommend some type of baby carrier or wrap. And if you are planning on breastfeeding, I highly recommend some kind of breastfeeding pillow. The one that I have used is the Boppy here. So I really like this one because it's simple. You just put it around your waist like that and it really helps to position your baby and help you be more comfortable. When you are first starting breastfeeding for the very first time, it can be really challenging at first to figure everything out. You and your baby are both figuring it out at the same time. And even though breastfeeding is a natural thing, it does not necessarily mean that it comes naturally. It's kind of like a learned skill and you will be spending a lot of time breastfeeding in those first few weeks so you might as well be as comfortable as possible during that time so this really helped me um, be more comfortable it helped me position my baby there were times when he was really little that I still had to stick a pillow up under the side of it or something like that to make it a little bit more comfortable but this was a really good just foundation to have to help with that positioning and it has come in handy for lots of other things too. I have used it to prop up my baby when he got a little bit bigger so he could sit up and look around. I have used it to put underneath the uh, play gym for him to prop his head on so he could be up a little bit to reach for things. Um, and I've even used it for a pillow for myself at times. So it's a really versatile pillow as well. You could even use it while you're pregnant for a uh, pregnancy pillow and to put between your legs when your belly starts to get big. So it's a really good pillow to have. And this cover actually comes off. You can just unzip it and throw that in the wash. I also recommend having some type of changing station. You don't necessarily need to have a specific changing table, but I did find it really helpful to have a designated area for changing his diapers because when they are a newborn, those cha diaper changes can get pretty messy. And it, yes, you can change your baby anywhere, but my husband and I both found it really convenient to have a special place to change his diapers so we weren't getting the bed messy or anything like that. And so I do recommend having some type of changing station and uh, changing pad. And so the one that I use, I'm actually gonna take you over and just show you is here we actually opted for a dresser from Ikea. And the reason we chose a dresser um, was because it had more of a multi-purpose function for our space so that we could actually use it to store his clothes and use it for a changing station. Whereas the just the changing table, we would have had to figure out a different place for clothes and stuff like that. So this worked out really well. It was a nice neutral color. You could customize it if you want. Um, and then we just got this changing pad topper. I think this was from Target. It was like $25, um, so well worth it. You can put your own cover on it, um, but it is just this 
plastic material that you can also wipe clean really easy if you don't want to put a cover. Um, and then you can also get the different covers that you can pull off and throw in the wash. And then with the our changing station, we have the top drawer for diapers and wipes and all of the changing essentials right there handy to grab. And then our diaper pail over here. And then I do recommend having that some type of tracking app for your baby. I know that sounds kind of funny, but when your baby is a newborn, you are going to a lot of appointments with your pediatrician to check up and make sure baby is growing and developing like they should. And the doctor is going to ask you how many times a day does your baby eat and for how long and how much, how many wet and dirty diapers does your baby have? And that can get a little difficult to keep track of when you're already busy trying to take care of your newborn and perform the daily tasks of life. So I found it really handy to just have a little app on my phone. So the one I use is called Baby Tracker and it's like a little green circle with a white baby carriage. Um, I'll link it down below for you. And this one I really like because you can track feeding, diapers, naps, um, and now that he's a little bit older, I use it to track what he eats um, so that I know what foods to try next, what foods he's already tried and keep track of if he had any allergies and things like that. So even now that my baby is seven and a half months old almost, I still use this app. So it comes in really handy just to track all those things. Not that you have to be super uh, specific about it but just a way to kind of at least have a general idea so you can talk with your doctor knowledgeably and just keep track of those things with your baby and then going back to feeding the last thing on my list is bottles so even if you are breastfeeding you might want to have some bottles handy just in case you want someone else to feed your baby at some point or in my case my baby needed to have supplementation because of his weight and even though now we're exclusively breastfeeding in the beginning i was really glad that i had some bottles on hand so i was able to pump and supplement with that pumped milk and having these bottles ready to go was really nice so i actually use two different kinds we use this dr brown's and this is really good if your baby has reflux he didn't have any trouble going from breast to bottle um, i know some babies might have that nipple confusion but uh, with us, we didn't really have a problem with that and it was really helpful to for my husband to be able to feed him sometimes and to be able to sup use these for uh, when we were supplementing. And then the other bottle we used was the Avent and this one was really good too because he really liked the nipple. You can switch out the nipples, but um, of course you'll want to start with like a slow flow for a newborn and then change it up as they get older. But we actually got both of these for free um just by our registry so for this one i think i was registered with target and they give you a free gift bag with lots of newborn goodies in it and this was one of the things that was in the gift bag so that's another thing i would recommend is checking your registry and making sure you get those freebies because this stuff adds up really quick so it's really nice even just a couple of free bottles can come in really handy so that is it for today's video for my newborn must-haves. I hope that this video helped you in some way. I know motherhood, especially being a brand new mom, can be so overwhelming. But I just want you to know that you're not alone. You're doing a great job. You've got this. And it's all going to be okay. You are the best person for your baby. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.